Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In my last video, I walked through a basic example of Blazor WebAssembly, creating a Blazor WebAssembly project and showing each of the components which are created out of the box by the Visual Studio template. And also then just creating a code behind class and show how we can separate the HTML and the C-sharp code into different files. The CSS is already separated by the template, but for C-sharp, we just have to create a .cs file with the same name. And that way we can separate the code and that class has to be partial. Now today, what I want to do is I want to walk through a couple of things which are very critical. First thing is how do we debug the application in the browser? This is critical because when we build application with other SPA framework like Angular or any other JavaScript framework in the development environment and the environment where the bundles are not minified, we are able to go into browser like Chrome and easily able to debug and run through the code. And this is a critical feature which is needed for Blazor to be successful as a client side programming framework. Hence today I'm going to start with that and after that I'm going to show some of the dependency injection concept of Blazor and how easy or tough it is to do it. So first let's start with debugging and I'm going to use the same application that I had last time. Now for debugging it is not straightforward. The way it works is we cannot just click on debug here and then debug in the browser that doesn't work that way. We have to use the command .NET run and then we have to use the configuration of debug and we have to do it in the command prompt. So I'm going to first open up the command prompt. Once the command prompt opens up, I'm going to browse to the folder where the code resides. So this is the current project. Now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use .NET run with the configuration of debug. Now once I run this, you'll see that it's building now. After building is done, it's going to start and it is going to run in the assigned port, which is HTTPS 5001. So if I now open a browser and if I go to the localhost 5001, we you can see that the application now opened up. So this is the first step. The application is ready now. Next thing what we have to do is we have to now do shift alt D. We have to use all the three keys together and that is going to open up a new tab. And in the new tab, it is going to provide a URL, which we are going to open up from the command prompt again. And then from that opened window, we can debug the code. So first let's do shift alt D together. And see, once I do shift alt D, it popped up the new tab. And here, if you see that it is asking to press win R and follow this instruction. So I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to run it from the windows run. And if I do that, this is the new window, which popped up. It's exactly same identical, but this is how it pops up. And you can see as it is doing the remote debugging port, this is critical. This is what it is passing to this one. And next I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to do shift alt and D together. And now I will see that the debugger opened up. And here if I go now and I expand the file, I go to the code. I can see the counter.cs file. This is the C sharp code. If you remember this for the counter, the code behind is counter.razor.cs. And this is the code. Now I can see the same code here. And if I put a breakpoint here, I go to this go to counter. If I click on it, now you can see the breakpoint is hit and I can see exactly the way it works in JavaScript as well. And then I do again, it hits the breakpoint and now I see the initial value was one. Now it's going to become two and that is what is going to print out. So one problem of course is that usually in JavaScript, we can see the debugger in the same window. Now here it's two different tabs. So it makes a little bit uncomfortable, but you can, if you have two monitor, you can put the debugger in one monitor and code in another. That's one way of doing, or you can split the debugger and the actual HTML in two different windows in the same monitor and you can do that. It's up to you. 
So this is first thing I wanted to cover. And as you can see, this makes life uh, extremely easy now because we don't have to worry about the code not being able to debug on client side. We should be able to debug it now. So that's the first thing I want to show. The next thing I wanted to show is most of the time when we do programming in JavaScript, we log messages using console.log. Now this is something you can do here as well. So you can just go and you can do console dot right line just add the system dot namespace and here we can just write something so once we do that we can go back to the UI and, and now if I go to the counter and click it a couple of times, I go back, I can see the current count log has been logged here. So this is something we can do. The other thing what we can do is instead of using console, because it's not comfortable, we can use something like iLogger. And I'm going to show it once I get into dependency injection, it's going to be a little bit more natural. So now let's talk about dependency injection. Now I just brushed through in the last video where fetch data was taking HTTP client as a dependency and it is injected through at the rate inject and this is how weather forecast works. In most of the cases we want this to be in code and we want this part of the code to be in code behind. So if we want to do that I can go ahead and create a class here and I can name it as fetch data result.cs so the code will come up here and I'm going to make it as partial. And then what I can do is I can just go copy this entire data, just cut it and paste it here, get rid of this code line. And for the inject, what we can do is we have to declare inject as property. So the dependency injection inside of the code behind for a blazor file works through property injection. It doesn't work through constructor injection because it's a partial class. So we cannot have a constructor with another parameter because the base class would have had its own constructor already. Hence property injection. But the good thing is for the property injection, we can declare the property as private. The main concern I have with property injection is that with property injection, your property is mutable, meaning anything, if you expose a public property, it can be manipulated. But here there are two things. First of all, it's just a code behind. So no one is going to create an instance of this class. Even if they create, it's not going to work as expected. So that's one good thing. The second thing is we can create the property as private. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to add the namespaces. So system.net.http and for the JSON part, I have to get the JSON. So, okay. One thing I have observed working with Blazor is that the Visual Studio intelligence crashes sometimes and it hinders with showing proper intelligence. So that happened with me a few times. The next thing I have to do is I have to add the inject attribute here. And then the inject attribute is coming from the Microsoft.ASP.NET Code.Components namespace. So I'm just going to do that since my intelligence is not working anymore. And once I do that, I'm going to save this file. Now if I look into the fetch data again, everything is working as expected. And if I go into the code and if I expand, if I look into the fetch data.reset.cs, I can see the latest code is reflecting here. And if I put a breakpoint here, this breakpoint is going to hit when I come here and you can see here that the HTTP object is showing up and this is going to make an HTTP call and it's going to get the response back. So this is how dependency injection works inside a code behind. It always have to be through property injection 
but the fact that you can declare a property as private makes it much more simpler. Now the next thing I wanted to show is normally we don't want to keep any code in the code behind. Code behind should deal with only UI related behavior. So if I have to create a weather provider how it is going to look like and I already created a class for that so I'm just going to add it to the current project. So I have a weather provider which takes an HTTP client and since this is not a code behind it can take HTTP client as a constructor dependency instead of a property dependency and it is pretty much doing the same thing that the code behind was doing and I have an associated weather provider and then what I can do is I can just copy this class so I can create a weather forecast.cs and I can just cut it from here and paste it here and the next thing what I'm going to do is here instead of the HTTP object I'm going to have iWeather provider and here I can do weather provider dot and then I'm going to call the get async method and that's it. Now one thing I have to do is I have to add the weather provider to the dependency injection container. So I'll do that's it. Then I'm going to rebuild the solution it's all rebuilt. Now I'll go back to the browser and now if I look into the code behind if I expand I can see the weather provider.cs and I can see that the fetch data is calling the weather provider.getAsync and now if I go to fetch data it's working as expected at this point in time I can put a breakpoint here and if I come back my breakpoint will hit and I can see it's working as expected and the last thing I wanted to show is using the I logger. So in the weather forecast provider, if we want to use logging, and as I mentioned, console.writeline is one option, but the other elegant way of doing it is using I logger. And for logger, I'm going to add the Microsoft.extension.logging. So that is going to get the logger then can say and I can use this logger here and log information something like this and now if I go back and refresh now if I go here and if I look into the code I can see that weather provider has logger dot log information so the latest code is reflected and if I go to fetch data code is going to hit the breakpoint and if I get into console I can see that info is logged and it logged who is logging it the provider and get data from server exactly what I logged so this is much better way because it logs other information in terms of which class is logging it so this gives much better way of debugging so this is at this point as you can see it is exactly the way JavaScript also works and the fact that you are able to debug C sharp code in browser it's amazing and to me though there are a little bit of hurdles here and there and it sometimes doesn't work as expected but I'm pretty sure in next couple of build things will get much more stabilized and it will be much more easier to work with Blazor. Though Blazor supports Edge I still could not get it work on Edge yet. I'm going to try it out and once I'm going to be able to make it work on Edge I'll let you guys know but as of now it's not working in Edge for me but otherwise 
it looks really promising as I mentioned my in my last video. In my next video, I'm going to cover unit testing with Blazor and show how it works. That's all I wanted to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching this video.